graphic. It looks super cute, right? Well, in this video, you are about to find out the context behind this picture that makes it a lot less cute. Hi, my name is Adria Rosario, and I'm a student at Mercer University. For now. Let me explain. As universities prepare for the fall semester, many have made the decision to go completely online due to the state of the pandemic. Others have provided a hybrid option that allows students and professors to make the choice to teach and take online classes in order to minimize the risk of COVID-19 spreading on their campuses. Mercy University's plan for its undergraduate campus in Macon, Georgia is to return fully to in-person classes. They are providing neither students nor professors with the option to take slash teach online classes. This is at a time when schools like Emory University, a school ranked number one in Georgia on multiple lists and at the top of the lists for best medical schools in the nation, is limiting its on-campus housing to those in select categories, as well as limiting on-campus classes, giving the majority of its students remote-only schedules. Mercer has also made the decision to have an in-person commencement ceremony in August, allowing each graduate two guests. Commencement was rescheduled from May as it was deemed not safe, but COVID cases have only climbed in Macon and in the country since then. While the ceremony itself requires masks and is broken up into smaller groups to allow for social distancing, the graduation itself invites family members from all over the country and even all over the world, many of whom will have to book hotels in Macon and many of whom may eat in restaurants or partake in other activities in Macon and can contribute to the spread of the virus in the city. Meanwhile, Macon Bibb County Schools is opting for a virtual graduation where only 5 to 10 of their students will be inside the building at a time and parents will not be allowed inside. And it's pretty clear why. As of Sunday, July 19th, the Georgia Department of Public Health reported more than 143,000 cumulative COVID-19 cases, up by 3,251 cases in a 24-hour period. This uptake in cases is hitting the city of Macon really hard. In an article from July 15, Georgia Public Broadcasting talked to healthcare workers from a Navison owned hospital in Macon. Healthcare workers reported overflowing emergency rooms. They claimed they had to start looking to other hospitals, even outside of the state, to find available ICU beds. So, why is Mercer okay with potentially introducing more cases to the city? And why is it okay with allowing students who may be coming from places that have better contained the virus come to a city that would put them at a higher risk? Mercer University has highlighted its many safety measures, such as testing students when they arrive on campus or having students bring the results of a COVID-19 test taken in their hometown before returning to campus, requiring face masks in buildings, designating a place for students to be held if they need to be quarantined, new regulations for food pickup, and setting up classrooms to allow for social distancing. Students who are immunocompromised have been encouraged to reach out to access and accommodations, but it is unclear what accommodations they are being given or what qualifies the students to receive these accommodations. While we know that these measures are necessary to make on-campus classes safe, we have to remember a key fact about Mercer that make these measures insufficient. Mercer University has a three-year live-on requirement, which means a majority of the student population will be returning not only to on-campus classes, but will also be returning to dorms. Many of those rooms require that two, three, or even sometimes four students share a single bedroom, and some dorms have very limited space between beds themselves. Many of these dorms have traditional style bathrooms, where all the students on a hall share a bathroom. This means that students not only have to think about their own behavior outside of class, but that they also have to hope that their roommates and hallmates are being responsible as well. Exposure in these closed quarters would be very difficult to mitigate if all students return to campus and would provide an undue burden on student RAs. Larry Bromley, the Senior Vice President for Marketing Communications and Chief of Staff at Mercer, is quoted as saying, while we recognize that there are some students out there who are anxious about this and have concerns about this, we are also hearing from a good many students, both returning and incoming, that they are ready to be here. They're ready to be back on campus. We're doing what we believe is best by our students in terms of what we committed to do for them when they enrolled at Mercer and we believe in the kind of education that we offer. It's experiential, and you can't replicate that online. His claim that many students are ready to return to campus comes without any evidence. There has been no formal survey of the student body in regard to reopening plans in the fall. How can you believe that you are doing the best by your students if you haven't even talked to them? Mercer University students, on the other hand, have certainly tried to talk to Mercer. Over the past few weeks, Mercer has largely ignored student demand for an online option. 
Mercer ignored a petition with over 1,000 signatures, an in-person protest, and countless student tweets contradicting their claim that students want to return to campus. Instead of addressing these demands, Mercer posted this picture, advertising the idea that hashtag bears care. Students flooded the comments, demanding Mercer provide an online option. If you want to see that this is not just a concern of a select few students, and you want to read some very compelling arguments about how harmful this decision is, I recommend heading over to Mercer University's Instagram, at MercerU, and reading these comments. After such a long time being ignored, we have to wonder, is this decision about putting money before lives? Because if so, having to test thousands of students, quarantine those students who test positive, having students transfer to another institution, alumni announcing that they will not make dis donations to the university, and the potential deaths that this decision could cause, do not seem like they would be good for any university's budget. A lot of these comments, tweets, and posts express our disappointment in our university. Mercer has us asking, how did we even get here? I am making this video to provide some insight into what it has been like to try and communicate with the school. I have emailed the president and the provost multiple times, and I have not gotten replies for over a week. Thus, I was grateful when Dr. Douglas Pearson, Mercer University's Dean of Students, took the time to call me back and listen to my concerns. But once the conversation went underway, I soon doubted whether or not my concerns were actually being heard. The most troubling comment that was made during our conversation as I was expressing my support for an online option was when Dean Pearson told me students do have an online option. He told me that many other universities provide online options and students have the option to go there instead of Mercer if they are not comfortable with in-person classes. Mercer University advertises itself as an in-person college experience and they do not have plans to change that. He asked me why Mercer should have to provide that option. I wasn't sure how to respond to that question. I noted that many businesses and universities that were traditionally in person have made the switch to remote learning and working, and how I didn't feel like those institutions were rejecting their traditions, but that they were actually prioritizing health. Regardless of my answer, I immediately felt like the Dean of Students, whose department's mission is, quote, to provide students with dynamic, challenging, and safe experiences that enhance the academic mission of the institution and prepares them to lead and serve their communities, was telling me that I had less value as a student because of my deep desire to go online to protect my own community. I'm sharing this to let you know how Mercer made me feel like they didn't want me at their school. If Mercer was able to recognize this, that classes needed to move online in March when the pandemic was just beginning, why are they so resistant to the idea of online classes when the numbers in our country, state, and city have never been worse? If Mercer professors already have to prepare materials for students who are sick, isolated, or quarantined, as well as students who require specific accommodations, why can they not just provide these options and materials to all of their students? If we are worried about going through this pandemic together, why are we alienating disabled, immunocompromised, or otherwise high-risk folks instead of providing inclusive opportunities that would actually make sure we are in this together. Why does each and every student, staff member, and faculty member have to make the tough decision between their own safety, and in some cases their own lives, and their education slash livelihoods? And if Mercer loves to boast about its service work in the surrounding making community, why are they not doing all in their power to protect the people in that community? These questions have yet to be answered and we are running out of time. Classes are set to begin August 18th, and many student groups will be moving in at least a week or two earlier. We need an online option, and we need it now. So that is why it has gotten to the point where I am asking the internet to put pressure on Mercer University and tell them that they have to do more to protect their students, their staff, their faculty, and their community. All right, so how can you help? Well, first of all, make this video go viral. Like and share it across all social media platforms. If you are a Mercer student, like and share this video and make your own. You don't even have to worry about making it long or editing it. Just speak your mind and use the hashtag, this is how bears care. Parents, students, and community members, I'm asking that you all email and call the university to let them know that we demand online options and we demand them now. We need every single person who wants these online options to take a stand. This video only scratches the surface of this issue. You can find more information as well as a transcript of this video in the description below. And finally, let's be clear about something. That petition, those comments, that protest, this video, this is what Bears Caring looks like. Mercy Administration, I think it's time that you take note.